I, 18 female, got into a heated fight with my twin step-siblings, 29 female and 29 male, and the whole family is on their side. My step-siblings, who are getting married in January, decided to marry on the same day because they are twins, came to me demanding to have my mother's wedding dress for my sister Carly and my mom's wedding ring for brother Carl. Since I was a kid, I loved my mom's wedding ring as it's the only thing left from my real father. He died before I was born. She promised me that when I get married, I can have the ring and her wedding dress to my wedding. I got excited and, like every kid, started to dream about it, imagining her walking me down the aisle. Sadly, my mother passed away two years ago. When I was five, my mother married a wonderful man that treated her like a queen and treated me like his own. Even after her death, he made sure I was okay and kept taking care of me, even though I was not his child. Me and Carly were talking about wedding dresses the other day and what dress she will pick for me as I will be the ring bearer. They didn't trust a child. The conversation shifted into wedding dresses and how she still hadn't picked one. I told her my plans and showed her the ring and wedding dress, who were safe kept with my grandparents. She was quiet and told me she had something to do and left. I shrugged as nothing. Fast forward a week ago. I get called into the living room with father, Carl and Carly waiting. The moment I stepped into the living room, both twins started demanding to give them the ring and dress because it's a piece of their mother too. I refused, saying that I promised mother that the ring will be my wedding ring and if I gave Carly the dress, she will ruin it. Carly flipped and started crying because I was ruining both of their weddings. After a few minutes of me still refusing because I know Carly will ruin the dress one way or another and Carly screaming at me with Carl next to her, our father looked at me and said, if you won't listen, you have to leave the house. They were also your mother's children and would love to have her with them. I was shocked. Father who knows and was there with the promise kicked me out because I said no. I still refused and left the house. I was kicked out of the wedding and I've been getting calls non-stop from the whole family saying how I was selfish and ruined the family and was childish for taking a promise made as a kid seriously. I'm staying with my grandparents until I get my life together. I feel guilty because they loved my mom. Me and the twins never were close. It's the only thing of her that I have. So, am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. I'm livid for you. They should never have asked that of you. They had a mom and stepmom, but yours passed and they want your inheritance of the ring and dress. No. They showed their true colors. Be glad you are far away from that toxicity. The timeline you give sounds like the twins are not your mother's biological children and she didn't come into their lives until they were 16. Is that right? If this is true, then definitely not the a-hole. Yes, that's correct. We're not blood related. Not the a-hole. Get away from them all, stepdad included. That was your mother's and is yours. They have no claim and no right to either the dress or the ring. I'm so sorry that they're doing this to you. This is not what a true family should be like. My, 31 female, sister, 27 female, was married to A for three years. Prior to their elopement, they were on and off for about four years. Because of their unstable relationship, my sister never introduced him to our family until they were married. Our family is very tight-knit and traditional, so with this late introduction, me and my family never formed a close bond with brother-in-law, and our relationship was strained because of it. About a month ago, my sister called me and told me that brother-in-law was in the ICU at the hospital being treated after he was hit by a drunk driver. He unfortunately passed a few days after, and my sister was understandably devastated. My sister held a funeral for brother-in-law, and my parents graciously offered to cover the cost of the funeral and burial. A week after the funeral, my sister didn't show up to my mother's 60th birthday party, which was odd since she had helped me and brother, 34 male, plan the party. I went over to her house after the event was over to check on her and found her place a mess. There was takeout boxes and trash spread around the entire kitchen and an entire sink full of dirty dishes. I offered to help clean since my sister was in a rough state. While I was cleaning, she began to tell me that her and brother-in-law had been trying to conceive for the past year and were unsuccessful, but she was late and decided to take a test today and it came back positive. I asked her if she was sure and she said she was confident and that she was going to schedule an appointment with her doctor. I told her not to get her hopes up until the doctor confirmed the results with her. For the past few weeks, I hadn't heard anything about my sister's pregnancy, so I thought it was a false positive and that the signs were just from the stress of her loss. Today, during our Sunday dinner with our parents, my husband and brother-in-law and sister-in-law, plus their kids, 
my sister announced that she was pregnant. My parents were shocked to say the least, and my sister-in-law immediately began congratulating my sister. After the dinner, I asked my sister if we could talk in private and brought her away from the rest of the family. I expressed my concerns for her and asked if she was truly prepared to be a mother right now if she can't even take care of herself. My sister got mad at the comment and said I have no right to comment on how she chooses to grieve and that her baby is the last piece of her late husband. I asked her if she was truly prepared to be a single mother, even though it would ruin any chance of her moving on since no man wants to date a single mom. I suggested that she should put the baby up for adoption so that it could be in a healthy, stable home with two parents. She stormed off and told the rest of my family what I said to her. My family thinks that I am the a-hole, and my husband thinks I should have chosen a better time to talk with her about this. But I really don't think I am the a-hole for trying to protect my sister. She is still so young, and she shouldn't have the burden of taking care of a dead man's child alone. Your sister's partner of seven years dies a month ago, and your first response after announcing she is pregnant is to tell her to give the baby up for adoption because a few weeks after her husband dies, you drop in and see a mess. What kind of BS is that? Yes, the a-hole, yes, the a-hole, yes, the a-hole. Did you really just refer to your sister's very much wanted, very much tried for's future child as a dead man's baby? That was her husband, you absolute cockroach of a person. Someone she was with for almost a decade despite you trying to invalidate their relationship this entire post. Yes, the a-hole, but so much more than that. You are actually judging your sister for a messy house and not wanting to play nice at a party a week after burying her husband. Then, to flat out lie and tell her she'd be alone forever. Why? You're a pathetic excuse for a sister and a vile human. Yes, the a-hole. You immediately assume she's unfit to parent her child. You think she's incapable. And you also made her feel unwanted by saying no one would want to date a single mom. Pretty sure she knows her own situation and doesn't need to be reminded. You should have just given her support and encouragement. My ex-husband and I were together for seven years. We got together at 18, got married at 20, and divorced at 25. Our divorce didn't end in bad faith. We just weren't compatible as a couple anymore, and we wanted to explore new things since we were glued together since 18. We remained good friends after the divorce. I met my current fiancé at 26, and we got engaged six months ago. I am now 28, and my fiancé is 29. At first, I didn't know how to bring it up to him about how I'm still close friends with my ex-husband. I had introduced them to each other, but I never disclosed any details of my and my ex's relationship, because I was afraid my fiancé would not be okay with it and would make me choose. My ex and I decided to never let him know. But, a couple of months ago during a family barbecue, an aunt of mine slipped up and revealed how I used to be married to my ex. My fiancé wasn't happy about this and almost broke up with me over this. He started growing wary of mine and my ex's friendship and wasn't comfortable anymore. After many conversations, we both decided to establish some boundaries regarding this. Till now we were fine. So our wedding is in a few months and the topic of who would walk me down the aisle came up. My fiancé asked if I'd have my parents or my brother walk me down the aisle. And while that was my original thought as well, I had another idea. I suggested that my ex-husband should give me away to him. Ex-husband to current husband, and it's kind of symbolic. He said he's not okay with this, and I'm crossing a line at this point. He said he's tolerating the fact that I still have a close relationship with an ex after I hid it from him for so long. He said I can do as I wish since who walks me down the aisle is my choice, but still, he will never be okay with my decision. Am I the a-hole for this? Yes, the a-hole, for introducing them and not disclosing you were together for seven years. In my opinion, having your ex walk you down the aisle is not symbolic, but completely weird, especially since you went months without disclosing the nature of the relationship. If your aunt never slipped up, would you have your ex walk you down the aisle and have your fiancé think he was just a good friend? Yes, the a-hole. You lied to him, and you tricked him about your ex. You want to stay friends with your ex, and now you want your ex to pass you off like property to another man. I hope he breaks your engagement and lets you go back to your ex, because clearly that's who is the priority for you. Yes, the a-hole. Doesn't matter if you're close to your ex or not. Walking down the aisle with him seems crossing a boundary. If your fiancé doesn't approve of this, then you shouldn't do it. It's his wedding as well. My, 43 female, husband, 46 male, and I have a 13-year-old daughter and a 21-year-old son. 
My son will be graduating from college in early May, and I am very proud of him. We live in the Southwest, and his college is in the Northeast. So my husband had planned ahead and gotten us the best deals for the flights and hotel because he wanted to make a long weekend out of this occasion. However, the problem is that our daughter is a gymnast, dancer, influencer, and actress. She is also very fashion crazy, and because of all the work she has done, she has built up a following on social media. She and her public school classmates were homeschooling in 2020, and she didn't want to stop. So it's been a lot of sacrifice in terms of time, energy, and money to get her to do what she loves. We took out a second mortgage to help pay for a place to stay in L.A. since she goes there so often. My husband doesn't really understand since he's not the one managing her social media or dealing with auditions, networking, callbacks, commercial shoots. Last week, one of the people we worked with previously in the industry told us about an audition that was taking place in L.A. The people who will be at the audition know of my daughter, and she's been invited to callbacks by them before, where they talked about how talented she is and how they would love to see her again. The role in question is perfect for my daughter and in addition, after so many self-tape auditions, I wanted to be in a face-to-face -face setting again, and my daughter does too. The problem was that it was on the same day of my son's graduation. My heart broke because there was no way we could be in two places at once. What is worse is that because auditions are a long waiting game, we could not just settle on a flight time to fly back there. So we would probably have to be there for the entire extended weekend and instead of trying to get back and see my son. There are a lot of random events for influencer kids in LA and my daughter wants to film a dance video or be at some restaurant's opening if she has time. I told her that this was a great opportunity, but if she wanted to be with her brother, just say the word. She said she wanted to go. So I told her agent and I went and booked the tickets. My husband found out about it before I could put together how to tell him, and I am ashamed to say we fought in front of our daughter. He said I was showing favoritism and that this graduation has been on the calendar for a year. I told him he doesn't understand that in the line of work our daughter is passionate about, last-minute opportunities come up, and that's why people trying to make it take part-time, flexible jobs. He got mad and said that maybe I should also waitress in LA because the costs are building up and we cannot take out a third mortgage. Am I the a-hole? Yes, the a-hole. Look, I get wanting your children to succeed, but your daughter is 13 years old, and by the sound of it, you were pushing to have her leave. I bet she did not know about the audition until you told her. Of course a 13-year-old wants to go to LA and film whatever she is into. So you put the decision in her hands while pretending to be the good mother, even though you knew the outcome. You should have kept it quiet and gone to your son's graduation. Instead, you put your own work in your daughter's first. This was your son's day, and if I was him, I'd feel betrayed. Yes, the a-hole, majorly. You bought a whole second house for your daughter's needs, but can't make it to your son's graduation? The favoritism is disgusting. Be prepared to lose your son. A 13-year-old influencer who has an apartment in LA financed by your parents taking out a second mortgage? What the duck? Yes, the a-hole, and so is your daughter. You obviously show favoritism towards her. Her TikTok career is not more important than your son's college graduation. You're willing to take out a second mortgage just because your child daughter goes to LA often, but you can't make one sacrifice for your son. If I were your son, you'd never hear from me again. My, 32 male, girlfriend, 28 female, recently bought property that's under hers and her parents' name. I'm not happy she did it because now we can't get a property of our own which was our plan once we got married. But she claims that I was never interested in looking at property, even though she has mentioned it many times before. In my defense, she's been talking about buying, renting for years with little to no action to actually go through with it. So I didn't think she was serious, and I didn't want her to get her hopes up that I would propose soon, because that was our initial plan. Get a piece of property before marriage. Now the place is under renovation, but she's making the final decision on everything. Example, color scheme, bed frame, kitchen layout. She occasionally asks for my opinion, but I told her I'm not interested since she kept referring to it as her place. I asked her what would happen once we're married, and she said that I could move in with her, which is fine, but she expects me to contribute to her mortgage in addition to splitting the bills equally. I told her that it wasn't fair because I don't want to contribute to something that doesn't legally belong to me, and she said that I was being ridiculous because I was willing to rent which is almost the same. I told her that she was the one who changed the initial plan, but she argued that she was always dead set on getting her own place. 
She's been living with her parents because it was more economical. But it's my fault that I never took her seriously. I explained that she was always looking at places, and she said that it was stupid to think that we could buy a place immediately without knowing what are the other available options. So she was just perusing to see what she would want. I still stand by the fact that I do not want to contribute to her mortgage, since at the end of the day, the place won't be legally mine. But she refuses to budge because she says the property purchase was between her and her parents, who are partially contributing to it. She tried to include you, you didn't take her seriously, and here you are, upset that she's building her way to financial independence and that you have no control over her property or finances. That is pretty messed up. Yes, the a-hole. You'll happily pay rent, but not to pay it to her, for a property you intend to live in. I really hope she sees how you are before she makes the mistake of becoming legally bound to someone who is so incredibly insecure, short-sighted, undermining, and unappreciative. Yes, the a-hole. If you're living there, you should contribute. It sounds like you're angling to be given an equity in a house you didn't pay for. If you want to own, ask about buying her parents out so you can own it together. Yes, the a-hole. Unless you plan to live elsewhere and to pay for your own accommodation, it is incredibly entitled for you to expect your girlfriend to pay for the roof over your head. Frankly, your girlfriend should take this as a warning and get rid of you. The definition of cock lodger is a man who lives with his girlfriend and doesn't pay rent, and nobody should saddle themselves with one of those.